and welcome to Tech Tuesday. Uh, my name is Tom Levine. I'm Cornerstone's uh, technical uh, specialist as well as our commission specialist here. Uh, today we're going to talk about Excel uh, pivots and graphs and um, they're actually pretty powerful tools. Uh, they let you kind of manipulate data freely and uh, view your data in a bit of a different way. Uh, it's really useful for just kind of getting quick summaries and sharing somewhat professionally looking uh, done graphs, charts, and tables. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I will say today's uh, webinar is going to be a little shorter than my usual uh, hour-long rants, so uh, hopefully uh, things will be pretty quick. Uh, but just a bit of housekeeping before we get started. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead and type it in the question box uh, or in the chat. Uh, I am watching both of them. Uh, that said, I might not answer you immediately. Uh, we'll probably answer questions here closer to the end of the presentation, or if you ask a question that I think is relevant, I'll probably bring it up in the moment. Additionally, uh, feel free to reach out to me directly at the end of the presentation if you don't feel like asking a question directly. Uh, my phone number is 513-487-5390, and my email address is tlevine at crnstone.com. Also, uh, don't forget that you can earn up to $7,000 with Cornerstone's Cash Incentive Program. Uh, the more you uh, sell, the more you can earn. Uh, for all group and individual and new business sales, uh, that's kind of what this program counts uh, between January 1st of this year and December 31st of 2022 this year. Uh, you can earn points that bring you closer to a possible $7,000 cash prize. And uh, lastly, don't forget that uh, we can help you out with Autopilot. Autopilot is our agency services program, uh, and it's designed to help you make a plan for your business, uh, your clients, and your family, no matter the situation involved. Uh, among the services provided are uh, Autopilot, which is our client referral program. Uh, there's Parachute, which is succession planning, uh, Flight Plan, which is retirement assistance, and Copilot, which is our service agreements. Uh, if you're curious about these, uh, you can take a closer look at www.crnstone.com slash what-we-offer backslash agency-services-program. Uh, it is on your screen uh, right there now. So uh, without further ado, let's get into pivot tables. Um, if you'd like to follow along, I actually have a handout attached. Uh, and if you have problems downloading it, let me know. Um, it's the same workbook that we've been working in for the last two Excel webinars as well. So uh, please feel free to use that one. Um, I will say we're actually going to be using the reference file tab today. And uh, the reason we're doing that is just because I think it has some better data on it uh, for doing this. Um, as you can see here, there's also an additional column that you probably see as well. Uh, if you're using an older version of this sheet, you probably won't see that. Uh, that is tobacco user yes-no. And that will be used later on in the presentation. Um, one of the things to remember about pivot tables is if you're trying to summarize data, you have to do it numerically. So uh, just the no yes over here, uh, that would not sum up correctly in a pivot table. So we have this column here to sort of match that no's being zero and yeses being one. So um, first question is how to even use a pivot table and what are they useful for? Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started by first selecting my chart area. Um, I do this with keyboard shortcuts typically. I click on the upper left hand sides, uh, you know, most extreme cell for the table that I'm using. Uh, this could be anywhere really though. So like, uh, let's say that my table started here in F384, uh, then I would highlight the full range of my data that I wanted to make a pivot table, and then I could use that section. Uh, I'm using keyboard shortcuts to do this, but you could also do this just by clicking and dragging. So let's go back to the upper left-hand corner of our data. Let's select the full table. Inserting a pivot table is really easy. You just go to Insert, and then hit pivot table. And then you choose where you want it to be placed. Um, I highlighted my data originally, so it's filled in here. But if you didn't highlight your data, you can also use this section here that says table dash range uh, to select your data source. 
You can also use an external data source or uh, external connection. Uh, this could be a connection to an access table. It could be a connection to a database source, um, but I always just like to use the data in Excel that I have. It's a lot easier. Uh, then you also get to choose where the pivot table will be placed. Um, I like to normally create new worksheets, uh, but you can also use an existing worksheets. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do this twice. First, we'll do a new worksheet, and then we're going to create a pivot in our tab titled Sample Pivot. If you select New Worksheet, it'll create a new sheet right here, and you see this sort of blue chart area. I'm going to go ahead and circle it just for clarity. But um, if you deselect Excel, that blue chart area kind of fades away, and it you see like gray borders. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it too well on the stream, uh, just because I'm not 100% sure what it's showing, but it's right there. Now, keep an eye on that section because that's our chart. Um, let's say I wanted to summarize all of the compensation I received all year. Um, the best way for me to do that then would be to look at all of our clients. Uh, I could use first and last name on rows. I could use our month paid to kind of get a little bit more of an idea of when these compensations paid, uh, when compensation paid, my apologies. And uh, then I can just select total paid and drop it into values. Now I have a list of all of what's been summed up here for the values from our previous table. And I know that was pretty quick, um, but all I'm doing here is I'm selecting the headers that I had on my data and I'm dragging them into this field below. Um, it's really that easy to create a pivot table. Um, what you need to do, though, is you need to remember what each chart area here that's displayed is showing. There's filters. So let's say you wanted to, instead of having the names you know, listed out, just filter through all of them and display things one at a time. You could move that data up from rows to filters, which is what I did. I just clicked and dragged. Um, another way to do it would just be to click it up here and drop it into filters. And then you just select a name, hit OK, and now you've got that client's list of payments. Another thing you could do is you could leave them all listed by name and move your month paid over here into the filter. Then from the drop down, you just select a month, hit OK, and now you see the total sum for that month. It's very easy and very simple to just get abstract data like this going. I'm going to go ahead and delete this entire sheet. And then I'm going to show you how to make a table in a preset uh, tab. So I'm going to once again highlight my data, go to Insert, Pivot Table, and an existing worksheet. I click on the Sample Pivot tab over here. I'm going to hit OK. As you can see, it says destination is not a valid reference. And the reason for that is we already have information here. Um, I put this here as sort of an example. Um, so you know that when you're using a pivot table like this, you can't select another pivot chart as an area to put in another pivot chart. Uh, the way you can delete these is just by selecting them and hitting delete on your keyboard. Um, but for pivot tables, it's a little bit difficult sometimes. Uh, people sometimes don't know what to do to get rid of them. And all you got to do is highlight the entire uh, range of the sheet, hit delete. It removes just like any other cell. So with that removed, let's go ahead and insert uh, some new pivot tables. I'm going to highlight my data source again, hit pivot table existing sheet, and choose cell B2 to insert my new pivot table. I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to create the exact same chart that I had before. I'm going to have a first and last name organized as rows. I'm going to have our total paid in values. 
I'm going to filter things out by the month paid. Now, as you can see here, uh, we've got some rates that were not exactly just, you know, tens place rounded. Uh, what I mean by that is we see fractions of pennies. And we can actually adjust this as well as make it look a little more professional by changing the way those numbers are displayed. And the way you do that is actually also through this pivot table fields list. If you click on the little down arrow here, under the uh, field that you're trying to change, and then go to value field settings, you can actually change not only what the cell is formatted as, but how it's using that information. Uh, we have a sum applied now, but uh, real quick before we change the format, let's just click on average instead and hit OK. Now in this box, instead of having a sum of all of our data, we just have an average for all of the months paid. It's really that simple to manipulate it. Uh, if you go to value field settings again, we can change it to count. And now we have a total count of the number of payments that each case has received. But uh, today we're just going to leave it on some for now. And as you can see, I'm just sort of clicking back through those value field settings. Um, that's kind of the quickest way that I know of to edit this. Now to make it look a little more professional, I like to go to number format. And if I'm working with currency, I like to change it to reflect that I'm working with currency. Uh, it has a few different formats. Uh, you can even change the uh, dollar symbol if you're working with foreign currency to things like the uh, English pound uh, and you know a lot of other different monetary symbols. I'm going to leave it at dollars for now. You can tell it how many decimal places you want to leave numbers rounded to by using the decimal places option here. And I'm going to choose to display my negative numbers in red with parentheses. And I'm going to hit OK and OK again. And when I do that, it applies that number format to all of the cells. And uh, if we wanted to change this up, once again, uh, we could do so pretty easily just by dragging and dropping. Um, one of the things that uh, I like to do is I like to add in any information that might affect a case if I'm just trying to look at it really quick. Uh, another way to do that is by adding are they tobacco users as a column. Uh, that way I can just see really quickly no yes or I could add another filter and then I could add another filter for let's say the relationship of the client. Um, what I'm trying to show you is you can use a bunch of different filters on these things. Let's say I only wanted to look at children who paid 10118. Then I can do that really quickly just by using multiple filters. So uh, let's stick with this uh, tobacco user section because we're actually going to use it to create a pivot chart next. Um, but for now, let's leave this as is and talk about this pivot table tool section. I'm going to go ahead and uh, circle it just so you know where I'm talking about. We're talking about the uh, soft menu item up here. So this is a tab that will open up whenever you click on a pivot table. Uh, if you click off of the pivot table, it'll be removed. But this tab is sort of where you get all of your pivot table related functions. Um, you can uh, change these sections by grouping them or ungrouping them. Um, that's not something that I typically like to interact with. Uh, it can set up different ways for you to view data. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select a range of data here and say group section. And that's how you would end up actually grouping things out. The reason I don't like it is because it actually creates a bunch of smaller groups when you use it. But if you're trying to create you know, multiple user groups, just highlight another one and group them up more. And you can do things that way if you're trying to split up clients. Useful to mention, but I don't think many people actually utilize this function. And now we're going to just Control Z to undo that. Uh, then another thing you can do is you can actually refresh the table data. So let's say I go back to my reference file and I delete some payment information. Let's say I just delete all of this data. And I want that reflected in this pivot table. 
Well, it doesn't actually update automatically. Um, pivot tables use the data that they were given at the time, but you can change that. You can hit refresh here, and now that data is refreshed. Uh, it didn't really change much. But if we check the payment dates for, let's just choose someone here, Rodney. Uh, Rodney for uh, 1 1 of 2018. Then we can filter it down to Rodney and filter month. I'm going to just apply that again real quick to show you. One one of 18. And now Atkin Rodney is blank. If I go to my reference file, I'm going to actually just undo back to get the data back. Go to my sample pivot and refresh my data again, and apply the same filter. Then you can see there's data back in there. Just so happens that I think the uh, people we chose all have zeros paid. Yep, so, but now it actually shows that data is listed. So it's zero instead of blank. Um, the, one of the other few things we can do, we're gonna remove that month paid filter and undo this uh, Rodney selection first. But one of the other things we can do is change our data sources for pivot tables as well. Uh, this is especially useful if you start adding in columns. Um, pivot tables typically have kind of semi-weird references. Uh, what I mean by that is once you select your table, uh, let's go back to this reference file here. If you insert a column right over here, we see now critical illness is all the way at the end. And just say this is data and then fill it with ones, let's say. Just creating some data. Then we refresh our table. And now we have this column that was added. Um, if you don't insert that at the very end or in the middle of the table though, um, then it'll actually cut things off we go back to this file, the very end, we have critical illness. If you add a column here in AB, then the pivot table won't actually pick up on that because we haven't formatted this data as a solid table. And because of that, um, it gives you this change data source option. So if you add columns at the end, you're gonna wanna make sure you update your data source to have the full new range selected. When you hit change data source, just gives you this table selector. And to update it, you just select your whole table again and hit OK. And that's how you would end up creating it, or updating your data range at least. You can also move pivot tables uh, to different locations uh, by using the move function. Uh, let's say I wanted to move this on top of my reference file, for example. It'll tell me that I can't do that because the references, you know, will conflict. But let's say I move it a little bit more. Uh, let's say I move this file to reference file all the way at the end, like uh, down here. Now I have my pivot table on the same beat as all of my data. And I can move it back the same way. I can just say move pivot table sample pivot b2 and now i have my pivot table back on b2 of sample pivot the last thing we can do with pivot tables in this tab is add pivot charts and we'll go back to it in just one second but i want to mention this design tab before we do uh, the design tab is really how you change the look of your entire pivot table and it's how you can make things look a little bit more professional mm. what i like to do is I actually like to apply this uh, orange setting right up here just because cornerstones colors tend to be orange. Uh, you can apply a gray header as well. And uh, you can also format your entire chart area. 
uh, we have row headers selected right now and column headers selected. But uh, this will let you sort of choose what areas of the pivot table you're styling when you apply a different selection. So let's hit this orange now. And because we have uh, row headers, banded rows, banded columns, and column headers selected, all of that area turned orange. If I deselect everything, then as you can see, it's just updating those lines. Sorry about that. I was trying to select down through. And let's just choose these uh, solid cells real quick. Uh, you can also add subtotals to your sheet from this design tab. Uh, for instance, you can just show all subtotals at the bottom of a group. So you can see right here we have new grand total added. You can also show subtotals at the top of a group. And because we only have one group here, uh, it's only showing it there. So let's go ahead and group our data one more time. We have it grouped here, and now we have our subtotal as well. We go to the Design tab. They show all subtotals at top of group. We have group one here, and we have our group one total as well. Um, for some reason, it's not wanting to actually move things to the bottom when I do this. And like I said, groups can be a little finicky. Um, it's why I tend not to use them in pivot tables, actually. But let's go ahead and do not show subtotals and undo our grouping. I'm just going to control Z back through it to get back to our tobacco user list. Um, the other thing we can do is we can change our report layout. Uh, we can show it in compacted form, which doesn't really help for this. I'm going to add some data here. You don't have to copy me. But I'm going to add relationships under rows. And I'm going to add policy numbers under that. And then I'm going to add sex to values. Now, this could really just be any sort of data. Um, but this is where these view cheat sheets kind of come in. I can go to report layout, show in compacted form. And it still does nothing. Um, I can show it in outline form, though because we were already in compacted form. Uh, and now it sort of spreads out all of our tiered lists. I could show it in a tabular form too, which sort of shows all of our totals uh, easily kind of referenced. Or I could just go back to the compacted form because it's kind of the easiest to view. I can also repeat all item labels and choose not to repeat item labels here as well. I'm going to remove some of this tiered information now and get into pivot charts. Pivot charts are kind of the best for visualizing data, in my opinion. Uh, I really like pivot charts because it can really quickly and easily be used to kind of show your executive team what you're trying to display. Um, the way you actually do that is just by having a pivot table created. You can just say pivot chart here, uh, or you can skip all of that. Let's say we're working in our reference file right here, and we just wanted to straight up add a uh, pivot chart. Uh, what we could do is we could go to Insert, Pivot Chart, and just insert a pivot chart directly that way. The funny thing about the uh, pivot chart and pivot table option, though, is when you create a pivot chart, it automatically creates a pivot table no matter what you select. So if you created a pivot chart just directly, uh, you would see a table behind that chart looking kind of like this, and every edit you make will be reflected in the chart. Uh, let's go ahead and make a pie chart, just because I think it's the easiest to kind of display what I'm talking about here. Uh, we have our table selected, and we're just going to say create pivot chart. Uh, we choose our data table as our pivot table that's already here. Um, we're just going to select the table in existing worksheet, and we're going to put it over here. And we're just going to use sample pivot. Actually, I'm sorry, I had that selected wrong. Uh, let's go ahead and remove this pivot table. Go back to our reference file. We select our data and just insert a pivot chart. Now we have our reference selected. 
we're going to choose our existing worksheet and go back to our sample pivot table. So now we have a chart listed. Um, this chart automatically is a bar chart. And I'm gonna just show you that real quick by adding some axes and some data. Let's go add total paid. As we can see, we now kind of have a bar chart that's very condensed. It's kind of hard to see all the information listed here. Uh, you can, however, narrow it down. Let's say we just wanna compare Jack and Jane. And the way I did that is I just clicked it on the drop down uh, right here at the bottom. And now all I'm looking at is Adam's Jack and Adkin Jane. As you can see, our pivot table on the left hand side here match that reflection as well. So I'm going to select all again. And instead of sum of total, I want instead to make a pie chart of our tobacco users. And what I'm going to do then is instead of sum, I'm going to change the value field setting to count. Or not count, actually. Sum was correct. My apologies. Then what I can do to change the type of chart that I'm using is actually just go into this pivot chart tools, go in, into the design tab, and then I can hit change chart type. I can change that really quickly to a pie chart, and it'll kind of show me a preview of what it'll create. Then I'm going to hit OK. And now instead of having first and last names as our axis, I'm going to remove that. And we're going to just have, um, let's say, the sum of uh, tobacco user as our axis. Uh, what this did is it had our label set from tobacco user and our sum of tobacco user as data. Now, I'm going to show you why it looks the way it does real quick. In our reference data here, we have a list of yes and no and then we have a list of tobacco users. This tobacco user list is zeros and ones, and we previously made it to match so that Y is one and N is zero through this chart. That is actually an incorrect example, and I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you exactly what making pivot tables like this needs to do. Um, in order to actually get a sum of all of this information, we need a column of just ones. So if I change this to just ones, go back to the sample pivot, I can refresh our data. Hmm. Let's go ahead and just change data source just to make sure that update, oh, okay. That's my problem, I was in the wrong file. My apologies, uh, I was in our working file. Let's go one and extend this all the way up. Okay, that's updated now. Let's go ahead and refresh our table. There we go. Now we have a full sum of how many lines were tobacco users and how many lines were not. Uh, this is also slightly incorrect because it's actually using the full chart, which repeats lines. But that's sort of how you would create a summary like this. Um, what you want to do is make sure that each data point is considered once, and that's what that row of ones does. Um, by laying this chart out and saying, you know, we want our labels yes and no from tobacco user to be our labels, and we want our values to be just ones to show one person, then we can create this table here. And there are more advanced settings you can get into for charts as well. If I just click on the chart area and go to format up here, then I can actually change some different things about it. Uh, I can change the shape fill for the area of the chart that I have selected. Right now I have this gray area selected. And let's change it to orange. Then I can change that to orange that way. This also works for bar charts and any other chart that you're working in for pivot tables to change the fill color of different sections. Let's say I want to change this uh, yes to gray or a darker color as well. I can do that really quickly. 
Shape Outline just covers the outline of the shape you have selected. So let's change that to orange. And you probably can't see it on my screen, but there's now an orange line surrounding that black section that I had selected. If I select my orange section here, change the outline to black, it'll change it to black as well. You can see this reflected over here in the table's, uh, you know, uh, Oh, legend. Legend is the word I'm looking for. I apologize. Um, so you can see that reflected in the legend as well. And you can also filter through the legend by clicking on it. Uh, in order to change uh, the title here, uh, you can right click on it and then value field settings and you can type the name. Uh, let's change this to uh, lines paid by tobacco users. If I hit OK, that changes the name of that field. So now we have a title that says lines paid by tobacco users. Uh, we can also change this chart area just by clicking on it and typing over it. So let's rename this one to um, lines listed, something like that. Uh, you can also change a lot more about the chart. And I'd encourage you to play around with a lot of these style formatting options. Uh, this can kind of make your table look a little bit nicer, a little bit better, and you can freely edit it. So it's very easy to kind of change the look of your table using this formatting section. Then you have the design section as well. Uh, the design section lets you edit exactly parts of your data. So uh, switching rows and columns is really useful because if you're using a straight table, I'm gonna hit it right now, and then let's look at our table and how it changed. Uh, what that did is it flipped the columns and the rows. So now we have yes and no listed as rows, and we have our just totals listed here. And then we could actually put names down here as an axis as well, and we could see things a little better on the table. Really kind of messes up our pie chart though. <laughs> Excuse me. And just flipping that also messed up our pie chart. So I'm gonna switch it back just for this example. Uh, once again, you can change chart type in the design tab, and you can move the chart the same way you move a pivot, yeah, pivot table from here as well. You can add chart elements as well, uh, things like chart titles, uh, data labels, and the legend directly from this section as well. And you can even just choose a quick layout to automatically apply from these dropdowns here. Uh, they're often popular you know, table layouts that are used by a lot of other people. And the last tab we have here is the Analyze tab. Uh, this Analyze tab is really useful if you accidentally do something like hit X on this pivot chart fields. Uh, this is also the same for pivot tables, uh, but if you ever lose this and you click on your chart and go, oh no, where's my fields? Uh, just click on field list and it'll show up again. Uh, you can also add and edit field buttons here, uh, but that's really more useful for pivot tables and a lot of people don't have a need to use it. You can clear out your pivot chart really easily as well, just by using clear. And once again, you can refresh and change data source as well. And these are all pivot table tools. I'm gonna control Z, get our format back here. And there's actually only one last thing you need to know before you start creating these. Uh, that last thing is actually just how to edit the uh, fields themselves. Uh, let's go ahead and click on this section and then right click. Uh, if we right click on a section, it'll give us a few different options. Uh, first is changing our data labels, and that's what we're actually gonna do here. If we click add data labels, then we get data labels printed out here. And it's tough to see on this black background, so I'm gonna change the fill back to, uh, let's go with a lighter gray. That seems to work. If I click on my fields here that have just been created these labels and hit format data labels, I actually get an entire new section that's available here. Uh, because this is a pie chart, I wanna show percentages and I don't wanna show values. And that's how you can quickly change the way your labels are presented. Uh, if you're using a bar chart, this section up here, this chart sub, uh, section here is also actually how you change your labels uh, 
for your data. Uh, let's go ahead and just change this real quick to a bar chart to kind of show you what I mean. Or a column chart, I guess, as it's called. Basically a bar chart already. Uh, then we have these axes over here. If I click on the axes and then click on this option here, I can actually change the way our axes are valued, and the same went for our pie chart as well. Uh, let's change this from a maximum of 600 to let's say a maximum of 550, and hit enter. Uh, you might also have to change your minimum, setting it back to zero. Um, typically, it expects you to change these units top to bottom. So zero, 550. Uh, let's change our major units to 50. And then we can actually change our minor units as well to, let's say, 25. This just creates a little bit of a better view, in my opinion. Uh, then you can also insert tick marks as well for tables like this. Uh, let's say major tick marks outside, minor tick marks inside. And I just did that so it's a little easier to view. I'm going to enlarge our table here. But what that did is it created these little tick marks on the left-hand side. Um, because I set it up to do by 25 uh, every um, 50 for our major setting. Here, let's uh, click on this here just to show you one more time. Uh, the major units, the 50s, are marked outside, and the minor units are marked inside at 25. Uh, so we have our value displayed here of 516, and we can see that it's kind of close to the uh, 550 mark, so we know it's around 525, sorry. Can't talk today. But um, you can also change these tick marks from here as well. And I'd encourage you to play around with these. Uh, there's a lot of different options in here. You can change your data labels as well. Uh, you can change the position to be high, uh, which just means they're listed kind of higher up. Um, you can label the position low, which is kind of where we were already set to by default. Um, you can have no labels, or you can just put them right next to the axis. Then you can change the numbers as well. So uh, let's format these as numbers, and now you can see they're formatted as numbers. Most of this stuff you won't really need to edit, but it's just nice to know that you can. You can also change the alignment of different things using this alignment option. And uh, I deselected our table here. That's why I did that. Uh, we can change things to be you know, bottom center, top center. Uh, this chart isn't really the best for showing these options, but this is kind of how you would change the way your text is aligning. You can also add in different text effects and fill options from here as well. And uh, that's actually kind of all you really need to know about pivot tables and charts. Uh, they're really easy to edit very quickly and get a feel for different sets of data. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know at this time, and I'm happy to answer them uh, and kind of alleviate any uh, struggles you might be having. I know we went through that pretty quick, and uh, I can be a little bit rambly. So uh, please let me know if you have any additional questions, and I'm happy to answer them at this time. Uh, okay. Uh, there is a question here that is, uh, as a small agency, if we have data we could use help with, could we reach out to you specifically? Um, I'm always here as a resource. If you have any questions about assembling tables like these, I'm happy to advise. Um, reaching out to me directly for work like that, though, is, is not something that uh, we directly offer. Um, if it's something quick, like just, you know, making a pivot table to throw in, I may be amenable to that, but uh, that's not a service we offer here at Cornerstone. Sorry, Eric. All right, and uh, thanks again for everyone for attending. Uh, I'm going to stick around a few moments longer, but uh, if you have any other questions, uh, once again, please feel free to reach out to me directly at 513-487-5390 or at tlevine at sierrainstone.com. Uh, thanks, and I hope you had a great Tech Tuesday.